when Jesus came to the territory of the Gardeners, two demonians who were coming from the tombs met him. They were so savage that no one could travel by that road. They cried out, What have you to do with us, Son of God? You have come here to torment us before the appointed time. Some distance away, a herd of many swine was feeding. The demons played with him. If you drive us out, send us into the herd of swine. And he said to them, Go then. They came out and entered the swine. And the whole herd rushed down to steep bank into the sea, where they drowned. The swine herds ran away, and when they came to the town, they report everything, including what had happened to the demoniacs. Thereupon the whole town came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to leave their distance. The Gospel of the Lord It's the first time, and as far as I know, it's the only time, not only we respect Jesus, but in history, that after a miracle, the person who performed the miracle is told to live. The normal thing out of interest, out of gratitude, is to tell that person to stay. A person who performs miracles, someone who cures the sick, who multiplies the breath, even who raises the death. To have such a person is a blessing. It is as if you had won the lottery. The normal thing is that they could have come to Jesus, says the Gospel, the whole town. Could have come to Jesus, bringing the sick, the word in the town, or asking for some kind of a favor. It was not like that. The whole town, without exception, the whole town told Jesus to leave. They told him with respect, with fear, in case he got angry and annihilated them. The whole town told Jesus to go away. Why? That has to have an explanation, because it is not normal. Why? Because this miracle, which had benefited two people of this town, two demoniacs, this miracle had cost them something, or had cost them a lot. Surely, they were dedicated, among other things, to the blending of the pigs. Therefore, it had cost them an economic sacrifice. And then, it was no longer compensated. If the miracle was totally free, you, you are so good, Jesus. Stay with us today. Do this for me. Do that for me. But if the miracle is going to cost you something, they no longer want you. I am no longer interested in you. It is no longer business. May the demoniacs die, even if you cannot go through the road where they are. But many my pigs not die, because my pigs are the money. This is not something that happened only to, with Jesus, although in that way, I repeat, it is unique. But it's something that can happen to each one of us, of course, not only in the matters concerning the spiritual, the soul, to those too, but also in all matters. One of the lessons to be learned in life and to be learned quickly, the teenagers still don't know. And many adults who are still teenagers haven't learned either. That lesson that I'm referring to is that everything has a price. I'm not saying that we all have a price, but that everything has a price. Everything. This lesson must be learned immediately, as soon as possible. As a child, you have to learn it. You want, for example, to get a university degree, to be a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, well, you will have to study. You want to have a good job. 
you will have to work hard. You want to have a family and have children's, well-educated children's. Well, you will have to devote attention and time to them. You will have to take care of your wife, your husband, and not leave them abandoned because you have a lot of, of work. Do you want to have a good health? It will not depend on you, but as far as it depends on you, you have to put the means. Everything has a price. You cannot think that your children are going to be well educated just like that and without you doing anything. You cannot think that your family is going to support themselves without sacrifice. You cannot think that you are going to have a good job without you making the effort every day to complete. In the same way, you cannot think that you are going to be a saint, that you are going to go to heaven without doing anything. That is the Protestant theory, especially on the Calvinist predestination, but it is not the Catholic doctrine. In everything, also in the things of the soul, you have to assume the price that you are going to pay. Jesus started when he said, he told that parable, the parable of the man who begged to build a tower without calculating the cost, and then the tower remained half built, and everyone laughed at him. You have to assume that everything has a price. The going to heaven is a gift from God, which is not bad with our good deeds, that it is being given by Christ, bloodshed, but that gives also has a price. It is a gift, but it has a price, and even though, even though it is a gift, it, it has a price, and in fact, that is a price doesn't mean that it's not a gift. When you receive a gift from someone who sends it to you through their person, you receive the gift. It is a gift. Having said your signature there, you having identified yourself in front of the courier does not stop or does not prevent that from being a gift. But you have to do something. It is a small price to pay to put a signature or take it out your ID. But you have to do something. We have to assume in everything in life that there is a price to pay for things. Do you want a family? A good family? Pay the price. And the price is the cross. Forgiveness. Sacrifice. Renouncing selfishness. Starting over every day. Do you want to have a good job? Be a responsible person. Do you want to go to heaven? Start living the gospel. Live as the Lord has taught us. Do not do evil. Do all the good that you can. The Lord will then give you heaven. Otherwise, you will behave like those guarantors who, when they did not give given everything for free, told Jesus to go away. Surely, Jesus suffered, but more did they lose who were left without Jesus. Amen.